Hello, everybody. Welcome back to SHOT Show TV. I'm Larry Keene, Senior Vice President and General Counsel of the National Shooting Sports Foundation. And I'm joined today with my good friend, Johnny Joey Jones, <laughs> who you may recognize. Joey is a Fox News contributor, and he's here at the SHOT Show, uh, you know, looking around, seeing what's new. How you, you having a good time so far? Absolutely fantastic time. I'll tell you, um, my career at Fox has grown a little bit since the last time I was at SHOT Show. And it's still very humbling just to walk up and down these carpets I've walked up and down for a decade now and have somebody stop and say, hey, can I get a picture with you? And so it just really reminds me of the community that I feel like I get to represent when I go on television and talk about politics, whatever's going on in the world. And I'll tell you what, it just really means a lot to me to be here this week and to say hello to these folks and listen to the growth their companies had. Or, or you know, I spoke to a gentleman that owns um, a gun store in Beverly Hills, California, and I interviewed him on TV the other day. I got to meet him today and just talk about how new people are coming in to exercising their Second Amendment, and this is the place that, for a lot of people, that gets started. Oh, yeah, I mean, the growth the last two years of people purchasing firearms off the charts, the two best years for the industry in terms of sales. But as you mentioned, importantly, the number of first-time gun buyers, yes. millions and millions, about eight million last year. I think it's north of six million in 21. And not just new first-time gun buyers exercising their constitutional rights, but the diversity of exactly. the customer is, you know, it's really breathtaking. More African Americans, more women, more Asian Americans, more Hispanics, Latinos. And so, you know, the old sort of stereotype that the gun owner is just this redneck white guy, <laughs> you know, from rural Georgia. Too many guys like know? me, yeah. that's the problem. The, it's just the, not the true. Face of, the face of the Second Amendment is the face of any American. That's right. These, these, this Constitution and this Bill of Rights that we have, they're for all of us. That's right. You know, not everybody works at a newspaper, but everybody can say what they want. Not everybody owns a gun company, but everybody can exercise their right to defend themselves and be involved in the recreational side of the Second Amendment, which in my opinion is just as important. It's not as easy of a talking point. Uh, you know, self-defense is a big deal, and, and it should be. But the recreational side of owning yeah. guns and exercising that right responsibly, that gives my son and I something to do. It gave my dad and I something to do. It's going to give my daughter and I something to do. It's a family affair. And it's something that, um, that SHOT Show really exemplifies. You walk around and I'm sitting here right now looking at a skeet thrower and some firearm manufacturers that are oriented towards self-defense. And that's the array. That's the diversity in the product and the diversity in people should be the same. Well, the, the show has just got everything you can imagine, right? Yeah. So from the, you know, it is the shooting, hunting, and outdoor trade show, and, you know, hunting, target shooting, and increasingly as the market is changed, you know, the self-defense, self-protection, the quote-unquote tactical market, that's been the biggest, fastest growing part of the show. So there's everything for everybody, you know, you're lucky you get to be here. It's not open to consumers. It's a B2B show, but um, you know, buyers from all over the country. You know, we have 2,400 exhibitors. This is the largest show ever. 800,000 square feet of exhibit space. That's like 1.6 million square feet. I mean, it's, I mean, it's it's incredible. And we have a really great, energetic crowd. People are really excited to be back in person to see their friends and to meet their customers and, and to do business again in person. It's, it's terrific. It's really amazing. You know, we, we use this term community a lot in the military. I come from the EOD community within the Marine Corps. Community is one of those words that we use a lot and we don't always think about what that means. If I've heard once today, I've heard it a dozen times. Man, it's a small world. Here's so-and-so who knows so-and-so that knows yeah. you. And the larger we can build those points of connection, I think the better it is for all of us. And when you come to a show like this, I'm reminded at just how much work these people do, because I'm very involved in nonprofits, most of them military nonprofits, and there's a place for them here too. And I want to thank you for that. I'm oh, here absolutely. with one of them today, and the, the amount of support, everyone that came by the booth to say hey to Joey Jones learns about this nonprofit, yeah. Yeah. they're manufacturing guns, they're selling ammunition, and what does that do? It shows us that serve this country, that those rights we wanted to protect, the people involved in that care about us. Well, thank you for your service, obviously. Yes, and as you know, my father was a, was a Korean yes, War sir. Marine, so I have a special place in my heart for, for Marines, particularly people who got the Purple Heart like my dad. So yeah. thank you for your service. Tell us a little bit about 
the non-for-profit, I mean, I know what you're talking about, but tell the audience what you're no, talking about. No, absolutely. And so there's a non-profit that became a part of my life back in 2011. I just lost my legs in Afghanistan. I was riding down the road because I couldn't drive yet. And a country music singer came on the radio, Joe Nichols, and was talking about this organization called Boot Campaign out of North Texas. And at the time, they were just trying to raise awareness by getting celebrities to wear combat boots. So I wrote them, I said, look, I can't wear combat boots. I don't even have legs, but I'll come fold t-shirts. I love what you're doing. I love that you're a bunch of civilians that started it. And it's, and it's all positive messaging. And that nonprofit has evolved over the last 10 years to now it has some real meat and potatoes behind it. They have a health and wellness program that help in the five areas that plague our veterans most. That's traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, addiction or self-medication, yep insomnia and chronic pain and they do it as a full body full mind approach and they circumvent really and provide a second option to the bureaucracy that is already in yeah, place with the yeah. VA and they also have a really cool program called Santa Boots which is a Christmas program and it sounds a little bit kind of surface level they go out and custom shop and buy Christmas presents for military families on hard times but when you get that call two weeks after you send presents somebody goes you know we weren't just down on our luck we were desperate we had no clue this was gonna happen. And what you gave us in these boxes wasn't presence, it was hope to get us yeah. through another year. And so what makes Boot Campaign special are the people that do it. I'm lucky enough to be asked and, and honored to serve on the board. Yeah. And, um, and when they come here, you know, most of their fundraisers are in Texas. They're skeet shoots, they're auctions and raffles. This is the industry that, whether they know it or not, supports that organization. Absolutely. So, so it's great if, to be here. If you're here at the SHOT Show, stop by the Kimber booth. That's where yep. you'll find a boot campaign. Um, so we talked a little bit last night about you know, your love of hunting, and I know you were recently um, afield. Tell the audience a little bit about your most recent duck hunting. Yeah, let me tell you something. And what are you, I mean, <laughs> as far as hunting goes, what are you passionate about? Listen, I. I thought I really wanted to go kill that big deer. Yeah, so you're up in Georgia, that's the big game. Then my brother-in-law introduced me to duck hunting. And what I learned is what I really like to do is spend time with my buddies, yeah. see something new, and get a chance to pull the trigger on something. And waterfowl hunting has really become my passion. I've been able to go do a main moose hunt and some really majestic, amazing, life-changing things. But if I can get in a duck blind and hopefully shoot at a duck, I'm a happy day. And duck hunting, for those that do it, it's not as easy as it used to be. Yeah. And I started going to Arkansas with my closest friends, my very best friend, Danny Ridgeway. He's just one of those North Alabama guys that he sounds like a banjo when he talks, but he's very intelligent. <laughs> and we just did two weeks. We went from Arkansas, one part of Arkansas to another. We ended up in the Chesapeake Bay and then over on the eastern yeah, shore of Maryland right. at Patriot Point. And I'll tell you, it's just the camaraderie that we get to share once a year together keeps me going all year long. Yeah. And Hunting, when it can be a social event, is at its best. Yeah, personally for me, I'm up on game. I like, you know, yeah. hunting over dogs. But the same kind of you thing. You know, pheasants, yeah. quail. That, that's for me what I really enjoy. Because you, you're walking the field with your friends. You, you're watching the dogs work, which is amazing. Just amazing you know? so, so for me, that's, that's what I like to do. But um, So you also talked a little bit, uh, we spoke last night about taking your son out and introducing your son to shooting sports. Tell us a little bit about that. Listen, I, <laughs> I did not use a shotgun in the Marine Corps and my dad didn't grow up shooting skeet or doing any kind of bird hunting. So I learned to use a shotgun after I lost my legs. Unfortunately, that only gets to be your, um, your excuse for not being a good shot up until you meet another guy with no legs that's a good shot. And then you lose your excuse. And you're like, well, I better go figure it out. And so I've been really fortunate to learn to use a shotgun, duck hunting and skeet shooting. And my son's a, a brilliant little 12 year old. He, he plays two different kinds of saxophone. I can't even do a duck call and he's over here playing <laughs> the saxophone. So he outdoes me in everything anyway. So two years ago, I bought him a 410 uh, Beretta, the brake yeah, action. Yeah. I bought myself a 12 gauge. Here we are two years later with that 410. He just outshoots me every time. Well, and don't so, take him in a duck blank. I'm telling you, better than you. I'm that's exactly <laughs> right. I'm like, son, you got the saxophone, but I really need you to figure out a duck call because I need you to come with me. But that's what makes hunting so fun. I mean, it's something that my son and I, I played football, he plays baseball. I can't carry a tune in a bucket, he plays the saxophone. He looks a lot like me, but his personality is different. And shooting skeet and eventually duck hunting is what yeah. we're going to share together. That's fantastic. Well, yeah. that's the tradition, the heritage passing exactly. from father to son is just so important. And it's so important to the people in the industry. Yes. Really, we, you know, we work so hard to protect that heritage and that tradition. 
you know, you know, so that's so important. And I want to thank you for the fantastic job you do on Fox News, you know, speaking out, uh, you know, and standing tall for the Second Amendment, you know, and protecting our rights. You know, so often we just don't see that on television. You know, the, we hear people saying we're the enemy, the industry's the enemy. So <laughs> thank you so much for standing up for the Second Amendment. And, you know, and thank you again for your, you know, your service and your sacrifice. You make, you know, it's people like you that you know, help protect and make it possible for us to enjoy the Second Amendment. I'm honored to have the platform I have. I don't, I don't know why Fox decided that scraping the bottom of the barrel with this Georgia boy that was a Marine is what they wanted to do, but I have that platform. It's my responsibility to use that platform for the things I believe in and care about, things I'm passionate about. And Second Amendment's at the top of that list. So thank you for letting me be a part of what you've had going on this week. And um, you know, I'll be here for another day or two and hopefully meet some great people. Thank you for joining us, Joey. It's great to see you again. Thank you, Appreciate brother. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. We're out of time, everybody. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the show floor.